If you are a physicist but not smart enough, then sometimes you can easily be deceived by the beautiful laws of physics. To assert this claim, let me consider an example from Newtonian mechanics. We know that the initial velocity, the acceleration and the distance covered by a body and time t are linked to each other through the equations of motion. For example, consider this one equation where S stands for distance, VI stands for the initial velocity, T for time taken to cover distance S and A is the acceleration during the time T. I can easily put this equation into this ratio form. Now let us use this equation and find the initial velocity needed for a body to move 9 meters up against the gravity in 6 seconds. Very easy to find. Just plug in this data along with A equals minus G equals minus 10 meter per second squared where the negative sign of acceleration accounts for, the mo for motion being opposite to the gravity. If I substitute this data into that equation and carries the numerical equation, it gives me 31.5 meter per second. Well, now let's come to the point of deception. And let me ask you how the velocity needs to be changed if I want the body to reach the same height of 9 meters, but in half the time it took in the previous case which is obviously this times three seconds. The common sense says the velocity needs to be increased and you probably think the same as well. Let's see what this equation of motion says by plugging in this new data into it. That is replacing t equals six seconds with t equals three seconds. Again, carrying the numerical calculation, I can easily prove that this time the answer is 18 meter per second, far less than 31 meter per second of the previous case. Obviously, this result is completely against of our everyday experience. How come this? The same distance covered with reduced speed in half the time? Isn't this perplexing? Think about it. Before I come to the solution, you better hold your cursor to this tiny little button at the bottom and hit the subscription button along with the bell icon so that you'll be rightly notified for my next videos. Now, back to the solution. In order to correctly locate the reason of this puzzle, let me reverse my calculation. That is, let me use these two values of the initial velocities and calculate the corresponding time in each case. Since the equation is quadratic in time, therefore, using the solution to quadratic equations, the result for time can be expressed in the form of this equation. So, let me substitute this set of data into the into the equation for time, if I replace this value, I see the time for the initial velocity 31.5 meters per second is 0.3 seconds and 6 seconds. And similarly, if I use the initial velocity of 18 meters per second, I get the two values of time equals 0.6 seconds and 3 seconds. So, for each value of initial velocity, I have two values of time. What these value corresponds to? In order to have an answer to this question, let us use the second equation of motion. That is, Vf square minus Vi square equals 2As. Since we know at the highest point, the final velocity in gravitational field is always zero, Ignoring the negative sign for initial velocity, we can write Vi for a height of 9 meter as the square root of 2 times 10 times 9, which is equal to 13.5 meter per second. 
This means that every particle with an initial velocity vi greater than 13.5 meters per second, per second will be at the height of 9 meters twice in its flight. Once when it is moving in the upward direction and once when it is moving in the downward direction. To follow this more obviously consider this figure. Consider two identical spherical balls in the plane with horizontal uh, represented by time and the vertical represented by distance. I throw these balls into the space with two velocities, one with 31.5 meter per second and the other with 18 meter per second. The first ball thrown with 31.5 meter per second goes along this large parabolic path and the second one thrown with 18 meter per second goes with this small parabolic path. You see the first ball moved along the large parabolic path hits the 10 meter height at two different times, one at 0.3 second and the other at 6 second. And the second one that moved along the small parabolic path hits the 10 meter height at 0.6 second and 3 second. So the first equation of motion in fact measures the time for the point at 10 meter in the downward direction and missing the point at 10 meter in the upward direction. Thus higher the initial velocity the longer the body will take to reach its maximum point and then back to this 10 meter per second therefore covering this additional distance and th therefore covering this additional distance that give its time of flight longer than the one moves with small parabola.